Well, well, well. 50,000 subs. Thank you so much for subscribing. Tornadoes. That's what we're talking about, all right? In case you didn't know, I'm obsessed with them. And to celebrate 50,000 subs, I thought it'd be pretty sweet to do a tornado iceberg video. So that's what we're gonna do. This is just a tornadoes in general iceberg video. In case you are unfamiliar with the iceberg meme, the stuff at the very top on the surface and up in the sky, that's like really well-known stuff. People who aren't interested in tornadoes typically know the stuff on the surface. And as you go down, topics become more obscure and a little bit darker. Of course, tornadoes are pretty dark in general, so the whole list is gonna be dark. And of course, I'm sure I missed many tornado topics, and in the future, I wanna make an enhanced tornado iceberg. So be sure to share more topics in the comments to feature in a future video. This is just part one, because this took way longer than I thought. But yeah, let's get into the video. Starting way up in the sky, we have some really, really obvious tornado topics that I just wanna go over really quickly. Um, the first one being tornado versus hurricane. I was talking to a friend recently, and they said, what's What's the difference between a tornado and a hurricane? And I was like, what, really? But that's fine. Not everyone is a tornado nerd like me. I get it. Essentially, a tornado is this. Tornadoes are those columns of air that come down, that descend and destroy everything in their path. It usually has a condensation funnel. A hurricane, on the other hand, is like a massive tropical storm system that looks like this. And sometimes they can spawn tornadoes, but they're not tornadoes. Okay, moving on to tornadoes versus twisters versus cyclones. The word tornado and the word twister mean the exact same thing. Twister is just a kind of slang term for tornado. Cyclone, on the other hand, can mean the same thing as tornado and twister. In fact, historically, it's meant the same thing. You look at old newspapers and it's like, cyclone tears through city. But now they're not really referred to as cyclones. Cyclone can also be a blanket term for any type of swirling storm system. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the first actual layer, the surface. First topic on the surface is we're not in Kansas anymore. This refers to the tornado scenes from The Wizard of Oz. Truly an iconic scene that was really well done considering this movie came out in 1939. Depicts Dorothy and her dog Toto as they try to seek shelter in their house. The winds are crazy, the door is flying off the handle. The tornado in the back was actually created by Arnold Gillespie, who was a special effects director for The Wizard of Oz. And he did this by suspending a muslin cloth from a steel gantry. And I've talked about it in previous videos, but yeah, pretty sweet, moving on. Tornado watch versus tornado warning. Okay, so a tornado watch is a weather alert that covers a large area where the ingredients are favorable for the potential of a tornado. These cover several counties and they're usually issued well in advance of the actual tornado. A tornado warning on the other hand means there's a confirmed tornado or rotation, usually radar indicated, and these polygons represent the areas that are in the tornado warning. If a tornado warning is issued in your area, you need to take shelter shelter immediately and usually the tornado sirens are going off within the polygon path. One easy way to visualize this is with this very helpful taco graphic. As you can see one has all the ingredients but the taco has not formed and in the other you got a taco. Tornado warning. All right speaking of tornado sirens I just did a video on these. What? Tornado sirens are sirens that are used by municipalities to let people know if a tornado is approaching or if there's a potential for a tornado to be approaching. Originally, they were designed for nuclear weapons. However, since the Cold War has ended and those aren't as much of a threat anymore, hopefully it stays that way. These are now used for natural disasters, specifically tornadoes and sometimes tsunamis. These are pretty creepy. I did a video on it. We're moving on. Next on the list is the classic 1996 movie and film, Twister. Very cool. Starring Bill Paxton, Helen Hunt, and of course, everyone's favorite, Philip Seymour Hoffman as Dusty. The film centers around a storm chasing team and their evil rivals. To change all that with a system that I have devised. God, he sucks. As they attempt to gather scientific knowledge with their Dorothy probes. Their rivals are in it for the money while they're in it for the they're in it to save lives. You know, they're the good people. Great movie, there's some huge Twister fans out there. People just love it. I mean, they can quote the whole movie. <laughs> and apparently there's a sequel in the works. Don't know how they're gonna do that without Bill Paxton and Philip Seymour Hoffman, but um, I'm excited. Tornado Alley is a large geographic area of the United States known for its frequent and violent tornadoes. The exact borders of Tornado Alley are debatable, but they usually cover Minnesota, Iowa, South Dakota, Nebraska, and especially Kansas, Oklahoma, and parts of Texas. 
Tornadoes tend to form here due to warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico, mixing with the cool air from the Rockies, leading to an unstable atmosphere and the creation of supercells. There are other tornado alleys in the United States, and we'll get to those later. Speaking of supercells, supercells are massive thunderstorms that contain a mesocyclone and a rotating updraft. These are often referred to as thunderheads or cumulonimbus clouds, and these storms have a very high potential for strong and violent tornadoes. Moving on to the Enhanced Fujita Scale, or EF Scale. This is a rating scale originally invented by Ted Fujita that classifies tornadoes based on their wind speed, which is measured by the intensity of damage they caused. That's very important. EF1, EF2, EF5, etc. Originally just Fujita, or F scale, it was redefined in 2006 after a bunch of meteorological experts did some research and experiments between 2000 and 2004. The scale is a bit controversial, which we'll talk about later in the list, due to the fact that the tornado has to actually cause damage in order to get a high rating. So if you have a massive 400 mile per hour wind tornado out in the middle of a field that causes no damage then it's not going to get a high ef rating and people don't like that moving on to storm chasers everyone knows storm chasers there was that hit show on discovery channel with the reed temmer sean casey and the twist x team storm chasers are tornado enthusiasts and professionals who go out and they chase tornadoes. They check in at the Storm Prediction Center, they see a high potential for tornadoes in a specific area, they get in their vehicles, they bring their cameras, and they go and try to capture the moment. Moving on. Ah yes, the Dust Devil meme. The video is not actually real, it was made using CGI, but it went viral back in 2014, and there's a specific part of the video where the guy has this ridiculous face in front of the Dust Devil. And this photo then produced a lot of memes. Also, the YouTube video has 21 million views. So yeah, pretty well known. At this point where the water meets the ocean, we have what I think might be the most well-known tornadic event, and that is the 2011 Joplin EF5 tornado. On Sunday, May 22nd, 2011, a large tornado tore through the center of Joplin, Missouri, resulting in 161 fatalities and $2.8 billion in damage, making it the costliest single tornado to date. This massive tornado was rain wrapped and was absolutely tragic and horrifying. Truly a worst case scenario. It happened on graduation Sunday. Even to this day, Joplin is still recovering. Very tragic event. We're gonna move on to the next layer beneath the surface. Hook Echo. Some supercells can produce a hook slash pendant shaped signature on radar caused by reflectivity of rain and hail. This is one of the hallmark signs of a radar indicated tornado, often issuing a tornado warning, especially when the hook echo forms a debris ball. A few extremely prominent hook echo examples with debris balls include the 2013 Moore and the 2021 Mayfield tornado. When TV meteorologists see these, they know the situation is getting really serious. Send some prayers to Mayfield right now. Quick disclaimer, not all tornadoes have hook echoes and not all hook echoes produce tornadoes. Okay, 2011 super outbreak. The 2011 super outbreak was one of the largest tornado events in the past 50 years plus. Between April 25th and April 27th, 2011, there was a tornado outbreak that spawned over 360 tornadoes, including four EF5 tornadoes. Okay, that's insane, four EF5 tornadoes? in one day. The two most notable tornadoes from that day were the Hackleburg Phil Campbell EF5, which resulted in 72 fatalities, and the Tuscaloosa Birmingham EF4 tornado, which resulted in 64 fatalities. Overall, 324 people lost their lives and $10 billion worth of damage had been done, which is the costliest on record for a tornado outbreak. Next up, the 2013 El Reno tornado. The infamous El Reno tornado occurred on May 31st, 2013, and it is known for being the largest tornado ever recorded, at its peak being two and a half miles wide. This tornado also has some of the fastest wind speeds ever recorded. The tornado resulted in eight fatalities, many of which were storm chasers. Storm chasers dying in tornadoes is actually quite rare. We will talk more about this tornado further down the list. Next up is tornado season. Tornado season is the time of the year when the most tornadoes occur, specifically in the US. Now this varies by region, but usually lasts between March and July, peaking at the end of May and early June. In the South, tornado season starts a little bit earlier, in March and April, and sometimes even February. Tornadoes of course can occur any time of the year, including December and January, so you always want to be prepared. EF6 
The enhanced Fujita scale only goes up to EF5, but some claim an EF6 monster tornado is possible. Of course, officially an EF6 tornado is just a myth and is impossible, although they do mention them a lot in movies. Is there anything bigger, like an F6? That's like a nuclear bomb going off. Canada's only F5, everyone's favorite tornado, the Eiley Manitoba F5 that occurred on June 22nd, 2007. This tornado was extremely powerful and absolutely beautiful, and there were no fatalities. One of the GOAT tornadoes for sure, and it had a ridiculous path. Look at this path. Fun fact, this was also the last F5 tornado as Canada wouldn't adopt the EF scale until later. PDS, aka Particularly Dangerous Situation. The best way to describe PDSs are like an enhanced tornado watch, where not only are the ingredients right for a tornado, but they're like super prime. This is a particularly dangerous situation. Particularly dangerous situations are also issued for potential tornado outbreaks. These are issued by the Storm Prediction Center. Only 3% of all tornado watches have PDSs. Tornado emergency. So we talked about tornado warnings, which is that there's a confirmed tornado on the ground or signs of a tornado on the ground heading in a general direction. Well, a tornado emergency is like taking that one step further. Think of it as there's definitely a tornado on the ground. It's definitely a strong tornado. And this strong tornado is heading towards a populated area. From the National Weather Service, a tornado emergency now in effect for Greensburg in Kiowa County. They're pretty rare. The first one ever was during the 1999 Bridge Creek Moor tornado. So if we go back to the taco meme, tornado watch has the ingredients, tornado warning has a taco, and a tornado emergency has someone eating the taco. Dixie Alley. Dixie Alley is the slightly less known but very active southern version of Tornado Alley. This encompasses Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Georgia. Some people think that Dixie Alley is a relatively new thing, but it's definitely not. I mean, Birmingham has been hammered by several huge F5 tornadoes forever. The reason why Dixie Alley has a lesser known reputation than Tornado Alley is because Dixie Alley is not a great place to spot tornadoes. There's a lot of hills, there's a lot of forests, unlike the plains, which are open and you can see from afar ways away. So if you're a storm chaser, you wanna to go to the traditional tornado alley because it's just gonna be easier to see a tornado there. Usually people in Dixie Alley actually hear the tornado before they see the tornado, which is terrifying. Tornadoes in the USA. So this is just the fact that tornadoes seem to be an American weather anomaly. Of course, tornadoes happen all over the world. Many occur in the UK, Germany, and France, and Italy. And we'll talk more about how they occur in Bangladesh and India and Pakistan later in the list. But yes, a vast majority of them do occur in the USA. You can thank our geography for that. The 1925 Tri-State Tornado. This is the single deadliest tornado in US history with 695 confirmed fatalities. It was part of a larger outbreak that occurred on March 18, 1925. This particular F5 tornado traveled from southern Missouri all the way up to Indiana, over 219 miles. This also makes it the longest tornado track. It's a truly horrific event, and let's hope this remains the deadliest tornado in US history for a very long time. The tornado river and valley myth refers to the idea that some people believe tornadoes can't occur within valleys or they can't cross rivers or whatever. Some people think if a city is surrounded by a river, it's protected by tornadoes. Not true, not true at all. It's just a myth. Tornadoes don't care about rivers. The Canadian River. Tornadoes been crossing that thing forever. And hills obviously don't affect tornadoes at all. Just look at Dixie Alley. Lots of hills, lots of tornadoes. We're moving on. The Moore, Oklahoma F5 tornadoes. So Moore, Oklahoma is a bit of a tornado magnet and it has featured some of the most infamous tornadoes in history. Recently in 2013, the May 20th Newcastle Moore tornado had 24 deaths and did $2 billion worth of damage. And even more well known is the May 3rd, 1999 Bridge Creek Moore tornado. This tornado had 36 fatalities and did $1 billion in damage. These are two of the most famous tornadoes in US history and they both hit the Southern Oklahoma City suburb of Moore. Pretty crazy, uh, if you're gonna move to Moore, Maybe you shouldn't. The Ray Colorado tornado was an EF2 tornado that occurred on May 7th, 2016. And it is known for the absolutely amazing footage captured by Reed Timmer and other storm chasers. It's actually one of the most viewed tornado videos on YouTube. I mean, just look at this thing. 
is ridiculous. Speaking of well-known tornado footage, the McConnell Air Force Base tornado footage is a famous extremely close-up video of a tornado shot at McConnell Air Force Base on April 26, 1991. This tornado was part of the Andover, Kansas tornado outbreak, and this video has been featured in many tornado documentaries. The 1991 Andover tornado outbreak occurred at a time when camcorders were very popular, so this particular tornado was very well documented, including some other famous footage done by Duke Evans. Now I'm not exactly sure who filmed McConnell Air Force Base footage, so please let me know in the comments if you know who filmed this. TIVs, aka Tornado Intercept Vehicles. These are specialized vehicles capable of withstanding extreme tornadic winds specifically with the goal of filming or capturing data from the inside of a tornado. Originally made famous by Sean Casey and his goal of intercepting a tornado for his IMAX film. Reed Timmer also has his own tornado intercept vehicle known as the Dominator. Reed Timmer showed off the Dominator on Jay Leno's Garage. I might do a video on these specifically in the future, but for now, we're going to move on to Layer 3, Deeper Waters. <laughs> Mike Morgan, Gary England, and James Spann are three iconic TV weathermen known for covering major tornadoes over the course of their careers. Gary England, now retired, and Mike Morgan covered the Oklahoma City area while James Spann covers Alabama. They are well known by tornado enthusiasts beyond their immediate viewing area for their excellence in covering dozens of tornado events, including the 1999 and 2013 Moore tornadoes and the 2011 Tuscaloosa-Birmingham tornado. Get Up Under the Girders refers to the April 26, 1991 tornado overpass footage. This footage is extremely famous and many people have seen it in their classrooms or in documentaries. It's captured by a news crew as they're being chased down by an F2 tornado. As they're being chased down, they take shelter up beneath an overpass. Get up under the girders! This video is responsible for people believing that overpasses are safe spaces during tornadoes when in reality, they're very dangerous. So yeah, you should not get underneath an overpass, especially when the tornado goes over the overpass and the winds are going ridiculous. Very iconic footage for sure. The Joplin live coverage tornado sirens refers to the Anderson Cooper live coverage of the Joplin tornado aftermath. As he's talking about the aftermath, the sirens begin to sound around him, and it's kind of just a well-known YouTube video. The sirens are actually now going off uh, here. Um, again, uh, there's been concern all day about an approaching storm. The 1997 Gerald, Texas Dead Man Walking Tornado. This refers to a very famous tornado photo. On May 27th, 1997, a huge F5 tornado hit the town of Gerald, Texas. And what's unique about this tornado is it actually went in the opposite direction of most tornadoes. This tornado is very well known for a famous photo called the Dead Man Walking. This photo initially became famous after it was featured in a documentary. I mean, obviously the photo is ridiculous. It looks scary as heck. It looks like there's some sort of monster walking into Gerald, which is true. I mean, that tornado really was a monster and it was one of the most powerful tornadoes ever recorded. Probably the most famous tornado photo or one of the most famous tornado photos. Will Norton, aka a wildebeest is a YouTuber from Joplin, Missouri who is one of the more well-known fatalities from that day. Will Norton passed away when its vehicle was struck by an EF5 tornado while he was driving home from his own graduation. I mentioned more about him in my Joplin Fatalities Map video. I've been watching many of his videos actually throughout the last few days and he seems like a really cool guy. Like he just seems really down to earth, really funny. It's really unfortunate that his life was taken at such a young age. Rest in peace, wildebeest. Tornado Alley moving east. This refers to the idea that Tornado Alley appears to be moving more to the east compared to where it has historically been. This is due to the fact that in the past four decades there have been less tornadoes in the traditional Tornado Alley and actually more tornadoes a little to the east. Some very recent examples include the 2020 Nashville Tornado and the 2021 Mayfield Tornado. Some experts blame climate change while others still aren't quite sure what's going on. So is it moving to the east? Perhaps? Guess we'll see what happens in the long term. What are your thoughts? The EF5 drought. 
So the 2013 Newcastle Moor tornado was actually the last recorded EF5 tornado on record. That means that it has been almost 10 years since the last rated EF5 tornado. Technically, this means that no tornado has caused EF5 damage. So while large and strong tornadoes have occurred since 2013, there have officially been none that have been classified as an EF5. This is pretty insane considering that 2011 had six EF5 tornadoes, six of them. We are currently in the longest recorded EF5 drought, which is good. I mean, come on, we don't want EF5 tornadoes to occur. The last EF5 drought before the current one was actually between 2007 and 1999. The Pilger Twin Tornadoes refers to another legendary tornado event that occurred on June 16th, 2014 near the town of Pilger, Nebraska. This event featured two twin EF4 tornadoes, an extremely rare event that I would have paid so much to see. Unfortunately, each tornado took one life. It's crazy to have twin tornadoes. It's even crazier to have extremely strong twin EF4 tornadoes. Definitely an iconic event remembered by many. A Reno was an EF3 refers to the fact that the largest tornado and one of the strongest tornadoes ever was only classified as an EF3, even though many believe it is or should be an EF5. The topic is quite controversial amongst tornado enthusiasts because it seems strange that it would have such a low rating. But remember, the EF scale is based off of damage, and the El Reno tornado fortunately really didn't cause much damage. There was a little bit of damage, but not enough to warrant an EF5 rating. Nocturnal tornadoes refers to, well, tornadoes that occur at night. These are very feared by many for a good reason. You can't see them coming and they occur while you're sleeping. And for this reason, they're actually twice as deadly compared to their daytime counterparts. The night factor really does add another layer of scariness to events that are already quite frightening. Nocturnal tornadoes are actually rare as most tornadoes occur in the late afternoon or early morning. The 2007 Greensburg, Kansas tornado is one of the most destructive EF5s in the past 20 years. Occurring on May 4th, 2007, the tornado struck the small Kansas town of Greensburg, killing 13 and nearly wiping the town off the map. Virtually every building in Greensburg was destroyed. This tornado even picked up an extremely heavy meteorite, which was lost for several days. This tornado caused the town's population to cut in half. Truly a terrible event. Also iconic is Dave Freeman's coverage of this tornado. The 1974 super outbreak was one of the largest tornado outbreaks ever recorded. Overall, there were 148 confirmed tornadoes causing 319 deaths and $5 billion worth of damage adjusted for inflation. Overall, there were seven EF5 tornadoes. Seven. Like I said, we're in an EF5 drought and there was seven during the super outbreak. Insane. Some notable examples include the Gwyn, the Brandenburg, the Xenia, and the Tanner tornadoes. Indiana gets its fair share of tornadoes, and technically it's not part of the traditional tornado alley, and technically it's not part of Dixie Alley. It's kind of, you know, in between the two, a little bit to the right, but yeah, it's got its own alley. Hoosier out, Hoosier, how do you say that, Hoosier? Bangladesh, Pakistan, and India refers to the idea that other than the U.S., there seems to be another tornado hotspot near eastern India and Bangladesh and Pakistan. In fact, the deadliest tornado of all time killed over 1,300 individuals. This occurred in 1989. The KFOR live coverage of the 1999 Bridge Creek Moor tornado is one of the most iconic live TV moments ever. Mike Morgan, along with Dan Anderson, did an excellent job covering this storm. Perhaps the most well-known part of the live broadcast is the scene where they show the more exit sign and you can see horizontal vortices being filmed. Mike Morgan is literally speechless. Go get safe. Oh my gosh. 89, South 89. Mayfield should have been an EF5. There are many amongst the tornado enthusiast community that believe that the December 10th, 2020 Western Kentucky EF4 tornado should have been declared as an EF5. It can be quite controversial, especially when you bring up the EF5 drought I spoke about earlier. Of course, the surveys were done by professionals who know what they're doing, so I want to just go ahead and take their side on this matter. What do you think? Do you think Mayfield should have been an EF5? Flying cows refers to a famous tornado trope of cows being picked up and thrown by tornadoes, mostly because people put farms and tornadoes together due to their frequent appearance in the U.S. plains. We're going to move on. TVS, or Tornado Vortex Signature. This refers to velocity radar indicated rotation, which can help pinpoint the exact location 
of a tornado. Reds, which represent winds flowing away from the radar site, and greens, which represent winds moving toward the radar station. And when these bright reds and bright greens are close to each other, they can signify a storm's rotation. These, along with hook echoes and debris balls, can indicate the tornado's location. All you can do is pray refers to the iconic Tuscaloosa tornado live coverage by James Spann from ABC 3540. James Spann is watching the Tuscaloosa sky cam and he is just absolutely speechless as a mile wide tornado is occurring right before his eyes. You know, James Spann is like, wow, this is really a terrible situation. And he doesn't know what to say. So he just goes, all you can do is pray. Look at that. Goodness gracious. This will be a day that will go down in state history. And all you can do is pray for those people. Tornadoes sound like trains. So this is the idea that tornadoes sound like trains. If you've ever heard a train, like a freight train, it kind of has this low rumble to it. And people say that's exactly what tornadoes sound like off in the distance as they approach. Here's an example. Very eerie, especially if you live in Dixie Alley where you can't see them coming, um, especially at night when you can't see them coming. So yeah, tornadoes sound like trains. And that concludes part one of our tornado iceberg video. Be sure to subscribe. Part two is coming out in a week. Thanks again for 50,000 subs. If you have any questions, if you want to reach out to me, you can on my Instagram page or from my email in the description if you got questions. I'm so thankful for y'all. Thanks for watching.